Hi, welcome to this tutorial. Visualizing financial data is an important step when you are building your algorithmic trading model because it's always easier to see the action on a graph instead of reading plain numbers. In the previous video, we saw how to download financial trading data from online resources in the form of CSV files or even directly into our data frame from the Python code that we are writing using Jupyter Notebook. This video is dedicated for data visualization, so we're going to see how to plot price movements, candlesticks, moving averages, and how to add scatter points, lines, and maybe other indicators on the chart. So this is our Jupyter Notebook page I will start by downloading the data using Y finance package just like we have explained in the previous video so I'm importing Y finance as YF and my data frame will be equal to YF dot download I'm using the download function the Bitcoin versus the US dollar prices the maximum period that is available on the servers of Y finance and we are downloading the daily time frame charts now we can print what was downloaded and loaded in the data frame and I can see we have the open high low close price the adjusted closing price and the volume for each date at this point we can use matplotlib to uh, make a normal plot just a graph using the closing prices for example so my data frame is called data first of all I'm importing matplotlib.pyplot as plt then I'm using the plot function I'm providing for the uh, coordinates the data.index meaning the index of my data frame and then the data.close and we can show the plot so this is the data that we have starting from 2014 up to 2022 and we can see the closing prices of the Bitcoin throughout the years or we can choose simply a small slice of our data frame for example I'm going for data frame plot for example is equal to the slice of data let's say the row 0 up to the row 100 and then I'm replacing here the FPL now I have like a zoom in graph between row 0 and row index 100 and these are the first 100 days let's say of our data and if you care about aesthetics you can change the color and the style of the graph for example I'm putting comma green O meaning green point and we're going to try to run this it should be between double quotes this is how we get our graph it's the same plot but now we are using green dots instead of the lines of course you can change this for example we can put blue dots and now we got our points in blue and so on so as you can see you can have a lot of parameters that you might be able to modify just to change the look of your graph to give you just an idea you might check the plot function online there's a wealth of parameters that you might be able to change and for example if we are interested in plotting the highs we can simply replace this close by high and now we will get something slightly different because we are plotting the highest points of each candles okay but these are not candlesticks and if you would like to have more professional or more financial data looking graph we might use the uh, plotly.graph underscore objects I'm importing this as GO and then I'm declaring a new variable called fig for figure which is equal to the figure outcome of this function so this function is going to take different data formats and in this case we are interested in using the candlesticks parameter I'm putting data is equal go dot candlestick because I'm transforming my data into the candlestick format so the function would understand it as a candlestick first of all the index is used for the x-axis and the rest are the four parameters that would define a candlestick so we have the open is equal to dfpl open so in this case we have to slice again our dfpl I called it the data frame for plotting this is why I called dfpl so I'm putting this here and again we are plotting the first 100 candlesticks or the first 100 days of our data so the x-axis is dfpl.index then the opening price is dfpl open column the high price is the FPL high column notice they are all separated by commas right here the syntax here is very important because all of this is going into the data parameter so the opening price the high price the low price of the candle and the closing price of the candle and at this point we can simply close the parentheses then we add the figure.show function to show the figure so we have the slider to zoom in and we can move it left and right and so on and if we want to remove the uh, range slider from our figure we can add an update where the layout x-axis range slider visible variable is set equal to false so now when we run this 
we get our figure but without the range slider. If you are into aesthetics and you would like to change the colors of your candles, we can add some parameters within the candlestick function that we can see right here. So we have the X index of the uh, data frame, then we have open, high, low, close price, and then we can have the colors right here. We can add these here. So I'm gonna add these into a new line. We can see them clearly on the screen. And then we have the increasing line color is going to be set to yellow. In this case, I chose yellow for increasing candles and the decreasing candles are going to be colored in blue. And this is our candles uh, pattern now. So as you can see, we have the colors of the uh, upgoing candle and the downgoing candle. If you want to change the color of the background and the page where we are plotting our uh, figure, we can update the layout and the paper background color is going to be black for the sake of this example. I'm going to run this and this is the paper background color that we can see here. If you want to change the background as well, we can change the plot color this time. So we have the paper background color and the plot background color which is also set to black in this example so we can put blue here just for the sake of the example it's not going to be a good choice because the blue candles disappeared with the blue of our plot so anyway you see the point i'm going to put it back to black having something looking like this and notice that we have a certain margin around our plot this also can be modified in the layout of the figure i'm going to do this on a new line here but always in the update of the layout we have the margin l meaning the margin left i'm going to set this to zero margin b meaning bottom the right and the top so I put these to zero and notice now if I run this cell, the picture is going to be wider on the whole canvas where we are plotting. So it's filling the page somehow because our margins are set to zero. If I add my margin left, for example, to 100, I'm going to have a margin on the left of my uh, plot. But for the moment, I'm going to put these to zero and we will have the biggest figure that we can have to fill our screen. And if we would like to modify the grid and the X axis and so on that we can see here in white, we can add these lines figure.update underscore X axis and Y axis. And inside we have a few parameters that we can modify. So showing the line of the axis is equal to true because I would like to plot the axis. The line width is equal to 2. The line color is black. Well, if the background is black, it's not very smart to do this. So I'm going to put white right here. And the grid color is going to be black because I don't want it to show on my figure. So I'm going to put white for the Y axis as well. We're going to run this. And this is what we get. So we can see the white X axis and the Y axis. The grid disappeared in the background because it's of the same color of the background. And now we have our candlesticks on a black background. And if you are only interested in the latest data, we can download only the last three months of data, for example, using the Y Finance download function. So the period here is set to 3MO. I downloaded these and then we can plot only the last three months of data. So minus 90 up to minus one and we can plot this and this is what we get. So this is a live data and this is yesterday's candle right here. I'm recording this on the 4th of March and this candle is the 3rd of March. Today's candle didn't close yet so we are waiting for midnight and at this point we only have yesterday's candle. Now we can start adding indicators or lines and scatter points on top of our candlestick charts. So if, for example, I would like to add a support resistance line right here that I can see it, I'm going to add this manually on top of this chart. After the candlestick parenthesis is closed right here, I'm going to add a comma and on a new line just to be visible, I'm going to add a scatter point. So scatter points where the index is the uh, X axis, but the Y, since we don't have the uh, exponential moving average in our data frame, I'm simply adding uh, the line. So I would add a line around, let's say 45K. It's going to be a line that is equal to color red, let's say, and the width is equal to two and I'm going to name it support slash resistance. Okay, there are two corrections we have to make here. First of all, this one should be into a list. So the data is going to be a list. First of all, it's going to be the candlesticks up to here and then comma, it's going to be the scatter points or the lines. So we're going to add closing the list of our data. And the second correction we have to make is that our Y is indeed equal to 45,000 everywhere, but it should be in a form of a list of an array. So 
it's going to be the same value, which is 45,000 times the length of our slice of our data frame, the one that we are plotting. And we see that we have added our red support and resistance level line just at 45K. If we want to add another line, we can insert this into the list just before closing the brackets. So I'm going to add a comma and then we put a copy paste of the same line go.scatter the x axis is always the index of the data frame and here for example if we'd like to add something around 51k i'm going to put 51 of the same color i'm going to add it with the same name and run this and at this point we have both lines added into our graph and we can add points for signals, for example. I also added within the same list, I put a comma here and using the same function, go.scatter, the X is the index of the data frame and the Y this time, I'm adding points just on top of the highest points or the highs of the candlesticks. So Y is equal to the FPL.high plus 100, let's say. And the mode is equal to markers because I would like to have markers. The marker is equal to dictionary, size equal 5, and the color I chose medium purple. The name is equal to signal. I'm going to run this. If we can see the purple points that were added just at the highs of our candles. So of course these are meaningless for trading for the moment, but if you want to add scatter points or lines or even curves, you can do this using this function. If for example I change the size to 10 at this point, we're going to plot this and we can see that we have increased the size of our markers and if i want to position these below the lows of the candles here i'm going to modify it and putting dfpl.low minus 100 so i'm going to place the points just below the lowest point of each candle we can see that the scatter points are now below the lowest points of each of our candles the other parameters and functionalities that can be used using plot live for financial data can be found on their web page for example, we can add vertical line and add some notations on our charts. If you have any presentation to make, this would be useful. The easiest way to access the list of colors that is available in Plotly, actually we can put something that is wrong in the color, for example, uh, section here for this variable. And then the Plotly is going to provide us the list of the available uh, colors. Try it instead of the blue right here. And now it's working and we can see that we have gray candles and so on. If instead of the purple, I would like to choose something else. Again, we can put something wrong here. We get the list. So the medium purple is going to be replaced by this one. Medium orchid. Just to try something new, I'm going to run this and we have different colors and so on. The Plotly website contains more information about the different types of visualization that you can have access to. Of course, the Plotly website and the web pages, they are providing more information about the types of visualization options that we have access to. Okay, so I'm going to stop here for this video. I hope you guys liked it. Until our next one, stay safe and see you next time.